Hi everyone, welcome along. Today we're going to do some autumn doodles. We're going to use pens, watercolour and some metallic watercolour. So grab your stuff and let's get started. We're going to do a really cool little grid of um, watercolour swatches and then we're going to add in some pen and ink doodles. So I've got my one wash brush, it's not got enough water on it clearly, um, and I just am placing in some nice little swatches of autumnal colour. So I've got cadmium red, cadmium orange, there we go, that's better, cadmium yellow mixed up uh, up here and I've also got some yellow ochre and I've also got burnt sienna and I'm just using my very large one wash brush, the flat head of it to create some really nice little sort of square, they're not quite squares are they, sort of like squat rectangles and I'm just trying to get a bit of autumnal colour in there and I quite like that slightly rough edge we're getting on some of these and then we are going to draw in pen and ink some fun doodles. Last year one of my most popular tutorials was my autumn illustrations and I thought how fun it would be to do something a little similar but using pen and ink because that's a bit of a new slant for me on the channel although it's actually how I used to draw long before I was a watercolour artist. I've got some nice green gold I think because we can't forget about green in autumn it is still there just holding on. It's just a little bit much. If you find that you get too much water on your swatches, you can just sort of dab your brush off on the watercolour paper that on the uh, kitchen roll and then just lift some up like that. There you go. But then I need to wet it again to make sure I've got a nice amount of water for the wash. So we're going to let these dry. 100% and then we're going to draw on them and I also mentioned in the introduction some metallic watercolour, yes. So we're going to finish them off with some lovely metallic details because that feels again lovely and fitting for autumn to get some copper and gold involved. This has dried 100% and also I just um, sort of pressed it a little bit so it wasn't um, too warped because I haven't got it taped down or on a block. Um, so I've got my pens ready, my Winsor & Newton fine liners and you can see here the little numbers show the different sizes of nib. So the smallest number 0 0.1 is the finest point going gradually up to one, a whole one. So I find that I tend to use these 0 0.5, 0 0.3 the most, but they're really useful to have a range of sizes. And the other cool thing is they are um, color fast, uh, they don't sort of run in water. So I'm gonna begin by drawing in some of my favorite things that remind me of autumn. Now, if you want to draw in a, a basic sketch with pencil first, that's absolutely fine. In fact, why don't we start with that? So I'm going to draw a pumpkin spice latte, which is something I've still not actually had one of. But all I need to do there is just draw in the basic shape for a cup and then I can do the rest myself. So I have always been fascinated by wanting one, so we're going to do a nice sort of swirl on the top. And then I'm going to swap out for my size three, slightly smaller, and just do a little bit of uh, hatching to get in some shadow and also some 
cinnamon spice on top and then a uh, familiar if not vague reference to a little little coffee company and that's a really nice simple one to begin with so what else do we think of when we think of autumn well lots of walks in the countryside and a nice sort of gnarly log to sit on maybe so I'm just beginning with the end of the log and then I'm gonna have a little branch or two sticking out to get the texture what's quite nice is I'm not pressing too hard and I'm sort of almost allowing the, the pen to do almost like a dry brushing texture on it down to the smaller smaller one and just the last few autumn leaves left on there And then, again, just lightly using the brush, uh, the, the brush, I keep thinking it's a brush, the pen, and we get a wonderful woody swirl there. And then something I've been wanting to do something on, but haven't managed to get around to it yet, is a pumpkin. So I'm just beginning with a little gnarly stalk in the middle. And then I like to draw a pumpkin by sort of beginning with the central sort of bulge and then just drawing out so you can see yeah, I'm very much sort of swapping in between my size 0.5 and my size 0.3 and then I think we might just have a few autumn leaves. Do you think about that whenever you're doing little doodles or drawings, think about the context that they might be in. It's just quite a fun way of making things look a bit more a little bit more fun and a little bit more sort of placed in context. So little bits of shading coming up from the bottom and that's a really nice simple way of drawing yourself a pumpkin. Okay, what else would we do? So a, a woolly hat was one of the little illustrations on my last year's autumn illustrations. And so I'm just using the pen to make a, a woolly textured outline. for this lovely bobble hat, very chunky knit. The good thing with this kind of texture is if you've sort of drawn it a little bit unevenly, you can just sort of cheat it, cheat the outer edges by just adding more sort of lines of texture or not. You know what's funny is you'll probably find that your hand is starting to ache a bit by this point because 
so few of us are used to using a pen or a pencil more than for an absolute bare minimum um, because of course we're all doing everything on computers these days so <laughs> there's every chance that you're sort of needing to go oh at this point so yeah take it slow it's meant to be fun and there we go We've got some nice stripes on there and just doing those little dimples sort of coming in from the edges is a nice way of getting a nice rounded texture and shape. Now let's do a maple leaf. Now I think these are really potentially quite tricky so definitely do these in pencil. So a central line to give us our, our first point in the middle then two there, we'll get two points two there and I just think that's all you need really and then you can start like that bringing it back in lovely and if you want you can sort of do a few extra little bits of shading lovely now I really enjoyed drawing a pumpkin pie slice last time so I'm gonna do another one of those so let's Let's draw our slice. And then with a nice dollop of cream on top. So there's the pastry base. Again, I've never had pumpkin pie. Something I'd like to try. I think I'd probably quite like it, but and then we'll do a slightly crimped pastry crust. Maybe just a little bit of shading under there, but we don't need a huge amount. Now for some acorns up here. So again, if you want, we'll start with the branch and the acorn cups. And then use that branch to guide you down all the way. And oak leaf, wonderfully sort of wobbly and wiggly. Because I'm doing some metallic watercolour on these. I don't need to do like too much detail with the illustration but you could really spend some time making these really lovely and detailed.
And then I'm going to draw in a basket of apples, which would be kind of lovely for the harvest festival element, gathering in all the harvest. So we'll just do a little sort of U shape for the basket and another U shape over the top for the handles. And then I'll just sort of place in my apples like this. I'm going to do like a, a wooden type basket, but you could do a wicker one if you wanted. I'm going to basically, we've got like a, it's called a trug, uh, as, as I know it, sort of a funny wooden basket that is designed for gathering, gathering fruit and veg and things. Because it's a curved item, I'm curving my shading. And then just a little bit at the top. And then we'll have a few little apples poking out. Maybe a few, a few leaves here and there. And then last of all, I think I'm going to pop in a few little wild mushrooms. And these are really cute and really easy to do. So a little dome. And a base. And these can be all sorts of heights and shapes and sizes. And again, I think what would be quite nice with these is maybe a few little leaves for context. Okay, so now we need to rub out the pencil and we can pop in some metallic. So I think it already looks pretty gorgeous, but just to go one step further with it, we could do some fun adding in of a little bit of metallic detail. Now the paint I'm using is Fine Tech metallic watercolors and um, it's one of a few metallic paint brands I've tried and I, I enjoy using it very much. You can see I'm using it sort of with quite a wash feel. I'm not worrying too much about getting a like a solid colour. I just want to sort of give these give these paintings just a little touch of magic. And what I think could be quite fun is just adding a few dots just around the edge so if you want to get your hands on a fine tech palette and they do so many different colors um, this is just a nice sort of coppery autumnal mix that I've chosen then you can choose whatever you like It's making me think actually I can have a bit more bit of fun with some of these illustrations by maybe adding in like an extra leaf here or there on the floor. And 
then pop a bit of copper onto it. So yeah, I'm just using my four tenths brush to add this paint just so it's nice and controlled. But you can see I'm coloring them in rather messily. I've probably got a bit more room for a slightly larger brush here. So we'll pop in the gold and it's lovely because it works just like watercolor. So you can see there that I've popped some on, cleaned my brush off and just kind of blended it in there. And of course these pens are working really nicely in terms of they're not they're not bleeding or running now I'm adding more water. I think the key is to, to know sort of when to stop with adding your metallics and, and when it really heightens it. And there you go. Doodles for your bullet journal, for card making, or just for a little bit of autumnal relaxation. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you like this one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe and hit that little notification bell down below, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.